Good morning, children. Welcome to our Sunday message. It is April 18th. I uh, want you to know that you're important. Um, I wonder how many of you miss going to church on Sundays. Um, I know it's probably a little hard for many of you getting up Sunday mornings. It's the one morning where you get to sleep in besides Saturday. Uh, so we're making it easier for you. When we start back up again, we're going to be meeting on Sunday nights. So you have no excuse about get, having to get up early or whatever. Uh, but I hope you look forward to, to getting back together again on Sundays. Um, hopefully God opens the right door for us uh, where we have a nice classroom space for you. And we do meet for you younger ones. Uh, we will we'll do what we did before. We'll have a nursery. We'll have a class for the younger age up through sixth grade, and then we'll have a class for the older youth, uh, sixth, seventh grade and above. Um, hopefully we'll get some great teachers for you. Hopefully that'll be something you enjoy where you want to keep coming back uh, because you're important, young people. You're extremely important to the life of the church. So thank you for, for joining us this morning. Good morning, Veronica. Good morning, Grace. Uh, I trust that your boys and your girls are watching. Uh, Sammy's with you. All right, Sammy. Oh, I can't wait to see you again. Um, Veronica, I, I, I hope that your girls are, are with you. Um, I, I don't know, Grace, if, if, you're, if, uh, if your boys are with you too or, or just Sammy. But Sammy, I'm glad you're, uh, you're there. So we're in Jude, uh, chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. Starting a new book. It says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. It says, Jude, who is a brother of James, and I don't, James was, one of the Jameses was a brother of Jesus, so we don't know if that's this one or not, uh, but he calls himself a servant. A servant of Jesus Christ. Now the word Christ means a, a anointed one of God. That that Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the anointed one of God. Now servant has a meaning also, okay? Um, here's the best way to, design, to, to describe a, a servant, okay? Now at that time, this is 2,000 years ago, people had servants, okay? Servants were people in the household that, that did whatever the master told them to do. They literally were owned by the, by the master. And, uh, and something that we don't, that we frown on today, but it was something that was very common at that time. So, so Jesus is going to take the role of a servant here now, okay? So this will give you some meaning of what it means when, 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 Ju when Jude says, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. That hopefully you and I can say, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't, I don't want it to have that, that meaning that we see today of slaves owned by, 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 by people. But, but here's what it means, okay? There's a story in John. It says this. Jesus got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist, after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that he wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to the Lord, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Like, surprised? Now, now, here's why Peter was surprised, okay? Jesus was doing something that a servant did. And that time, when you traveled, you would travel and your feet would get dirty. You just wore sandals. So you're, you, every, everywhere you, you went, you, you traveled by foot. They didn't have automobiles and people couldn't afford horses or whatever. So they traveled by foot. Jesus traveled by foot everywhere he went. So when they would come to someone's house, what they would do to welcome you into their house is they would wash your feet. They would not just wash your hands, they would wash your feet. That was like saying, hey, you are welcome into our house and we'll wash your feet for you. But the master of the house never did that. That was the job of the servant of the house. The servant of the house would wash the feet of the guests that came. Now here's Jesus washing their feet. 
So when he came to Peter, Peter's like, are you going to wash my feet? Like, like surprised. And then Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. It was like Peter would say, no, 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 you, you are not a servant. You're my master. You're my master, Jesus. You're not a, my, you're not a servant. Jesus was given the meaning of servant, a whole new meaning, whole new meaning. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. So you call me, te now teacher was like, a, like rabbi. He was a rabbi, a religious leader. And, and Lord, a Lord, master. So, and that's what I am, he said. But now that I, Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash the feet of one another. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master. Now, if you know these things, you'd be blessed if you do them. Jesus became a servant because that's what he that's who God is. God is a comes to serve us. God came to die for us. God paid the penalty for our sins. And God says, now I want you to be a servant. That's why when we read here in, in Jude, where, G, where Jude says, I am a servant, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul says that many times. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. They served Jesus. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to serve him, to serve him. How? How? By serving others, by following his example and washing the feet of others. Now, that doesn't mean literally washing the feet of others, although we've done that at Collision. We've done that as a, as a demonstration, washing one another's feet to, to, to shows humility. What, 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 what being a servant of Jesus means is that you serve others. You put the needs of others ahead of your own needs. You serve them. I do that with you people. I, I serve you. Let me give you an example. I, I'm the pastor of the church, just like Jesus was the teacher, the rabbi of the, of, of, at that time. I am the pastor, the teacher of, of collision. When one of you has needs, financial needs, collision is able to help you, support you, to help, to take care of, do what, what, what it talks about in Acts, where there was no need among them. They, they met the needs of the people in the church. That's what collision does. But I do it as a servant. I don't say to you, okay, I got somebody come over to my house and get it now. No, I serve. I take and bring the money to you. I wash your feet. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, I take it to, to you. When, when we meet with Crash, Sam, you know this, when we meet with Crash, what do I do? I serve you pizza and drinks. Instead of you coming and bringing stuff to, to Crash, I, the head of Crash, serve you. I am a servant to you. That, that's, what, that's what it means to be a servant. And, and, and here's Jude said, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Sammy, God wants you to be a servant of Jesus Christ. How? By putting the needs of others ahead of your own needs, by serving others, by putting their needs ahead of your own. Even, even though you are, oh, like, you have younger, a, a younger brother. So you, God wants you, even though you're the oldest, and old, one of the, the oldest girl, older than Xavier, God says, I, I want you to be a servant to Xavier. I want you to serve. He, he should be serving you in the world today. And Jesus topsy-turvies it and says, no, no, you serve him. I'm the pastor. You should serve me. But Jesus says, no, no, Jim, you serve them. That's what it means to be a pastor. I mean, to be a servant. Are you understanding this? But let me let me read here in, in, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says this, do you not know 
that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. The Spirit of God lives in you. You are not your own. You have been bought at a price. You are not your own. Jesus bought you with his blood, with shedding of his blood. He, he bought you. And thank God he did. Because everyone he bought will spend eternal life with him. Those that he didn't buy will spend eternity separated from him. Jesus bought you. He owns you. You're not your own. He wants you to be a servant like he was. In Romans 14, 7 and 8, tells us this. For none of us lives to himself alone. And none of us dies to ourself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. You belong to Jesus. He bought you. He owns you. You are his servant. But, but he showed you how to be a servant because he served. Even though he owns you, even though he bought you, he served you. He suffered and died for you. It's just amazing. I hope you get an idea now of what it means to be a servant. That's why in Hebrews 13, 5, he says, Never will I leave you or never will I forsake you. I, I bought you. I live inside of you. My, my spirit is inside of you. I'm never going to leave you. But I want you now to be a servant, just like I was a servant, Jesus says. So go, go now and serve others just like Jesus did and just like Jesus told us to. Amen? You know what to do now. God bless you. Uh, look forward to seeing many of you on Tuesday night as we do Impact, Wednesday night as we do Crash, and soon and very soon we'll be meeting in person, okay? God bless you. Let me sit close to the prayer. Father, I pray that they understood what you said, what it means to be a servant. Pray, God, they have a desire to be a servant. Uh, I, I can say to them, follow my lead as I follow your lead, Jesus. Be a servant as I am learning to be a servant. Follow me, as Paul said. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day. Have a great weekend. God bless you all. Share this if it meant something to you. Amen.